Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another Monday night. Monday night live. I was going to say Monday night hobby hangout. <laughs> It's been one of them days today. I hope everybody is well. I hope you are. I hope you've all had a good weekend. Hope you've all uh, been keeping nice and warm. The winter's on its way. So for those of you not in the uh, in the in the southern hemisphere, <laughs> I hope you're. Uh, I hope you're all well. Um, let's have a quick look at the chat. See, we got we had Mark right in nice and early. We got Arnold de Gans in as well. Lord Maiden. Mark Berracloth was nice and early. Nice to see you, Mark. I hope you're well, mate. Uh, Steve Evans was in, nice and sharp. Thank you, mate. Ortega's in here as well. Looking for the, forward to the rerun. Ian was in, nice and early. Luke's off to watch I'm a Celebrity with his other half. And he's going to be back uh, when he's working tomorrow. Robert Zunk, <laughs> nice to see you, mate. I know you said you were hopefully going to make it. So uh, glad to see that you did. Mark Cawley's in as well. Tony Owls says, hello, you dirty, rotten scoundrels. I hope you're all misbehaving. Yeah, I'm... Fine, mate, fine. <laughs> Good evening to Christian as well. Hello, John Estel. He says, uh, evening all setting in for this. It's a nice mini. Yeah, we'll, we'll come out of that. So the, the title's maybe a little bit cryptic uh, for this one. Uh, the title being that sort of, um, sort of, I, I needed this mini right now. And I'll kind of come back to what that is um, and, about, and, and about why it was kind of a bit of a surprise, really, I, I would say. Um, Steve Evans, or other Steve Evans, I should say. Hello, mate. Krabby's in as well. He's painting, but he's listening. We've got Palms in. Good evening to you, mate. We've got Busey in as well, saying, I'll do all. Vigis says, Ogle Boggle <laughs> Morning All. Hello, mate. Vigis says, Do I recall Blackjack Legacy saying there would be a hobby stream tomorrow night for his birthday? No, mate. Mate, uh, you, you didn't recall that. It's my birthday on Wednesday. So I said I would be doing my hobby stream on my birthday. My birthday's Wednesday, mate. So yeah, Wednesday night hobby stream is normal. Uh, Yotan says, good evening, folks. You've been busy building prime minis like a maniac lately. Maybe I should paint a little. Yeah, if, this, if they're all primed and ready to go, mate, then yes, crack on with that one. Um, Starty's Man Cave says, all right, Blackjack Arenos. It's got to be one of the greatest minis ever made. It just looks so fun, happy, and a right laugh. It is a particularly nice mini, but we'll come to that one. Excuse me. I feel like I've got a hair in my mouth. <laughs> Not what I needed there. Oh. Weird. Let me get a drink and wash it down, whatever it is. Jesus, saying I need some dreadball in my life. We'll chat about dreadball tonight. Um, so yes, if anybody is interested in dreadball or anybody um, doesn't know much about it, we'll touch on dreadball as well. So um, yes, we will do that. Uh, VG says, it's, if so, that works out as well because Pete's just cancelled the agent stream for tomorrow. No, it doesn't work out well, mate. It's still a Wednesday. Um... Stu McMurtry's in as well. Hello to you, Stu. We've got Jeff Higdon in. We've got Derek Hodge. He says he's just finished assembling 30 of the new Oathmark skeletons. I do like them. Brad P says, snowstorm yesterday. That's just the start of it, mate, isn't it? It was pretty cold, actually. Where was where was I at the weekend? I went somewhere. Um, did I go for a walk? Or I can't remember what I did. No, I can't remember. But I might have just went for a cup of coffee, to be honest. But yeah, it was freezing. It was freezing. Simon Poffett, good evening to you. Hello to George as well. Tasty Brain Drain, hello fella. CXG says, hope everyone's keeping well. Um, Joachim says, he seems to remember the same thing. Yeah, I don't know why everybody's thinking Tuesday. I definitely said 25th, well, Wednesday. Um, uh, Mark Cox, he said, evening all, just popping out some coarse space scenery tonight. Nice one, mate. Lord Maiden's got, finally got his catacombs box. Nice to see that's arrived for you, fella. Good evening, Peter Stockdale. Good evening, Bazaar as well. Bobby Clark's been building tanks. Hello to you, mate. Um, uh, where did that jump to? Busey saying should change the start time to, due to I'm a Celebrity Clash. Nah. <laughs> Bollocks to that, mate. I've, I've, I, I stream every single Monday for the last three years at 9 o'clock. I ain't changing it for a TV show. That's, that's on for a couple of weeks. Um, Tony says no access to airbrush tonight so I'm painting colour shift with a brush uh, Mark says I'm giving his war cry ghoul some Ethonian watch nice one mate uh, Andrew Fairbanks says his parents are in town so he's going to miss a stream tonight happy Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving to all of you over at Stateside as well Spanky Taz says why hi hello Spanky Taz uh, Vigi saying oh, okay got the days mixed up as hobby stream is Wednesday night for you Thursday morning for me maybe that's what it is mate uh, John says got, got hopes to have some boats ready for Wednesday. Did, did your stuff arrive then, mate? And is that the case? Um, Peter Nicholas is saying, hi all for Dreadball. Uh, <laughs> Long Maiden saying, yeah, screw off, I'm a celeb, should change their time. Exactly. I'll have a word with that in deck. Uh, Joachim saying, we just want to have a live stream every day. I might do I might do a week of live streams once, just to, 
just for the hell of it, just to see what it's like, yeah? <laughs> Joel saying, I need to go on it. No, you're all right, man. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they're still in Wales next year. Reese is going to set his booth for painting and building and see what takes the fancy. Yeah, Tim Kelly, good evening to you, mate. Jim Zom saying, hopefully some time for some Necron Warriors. And John saying, not yet, but fingers crossed. I saw some of them have been arriving, mate, haven't they? So that's um, that's pretty good. Uh, and Robert's saying he's painting up some night haunts for Warcry. So, folks... I don't know how long we're going to stream tonight. I don't know if I'm going to go as long as I normally do because I'll be perfectly honest, I feel like dog shit at the minute. I feel a bit sick. Um, it ain't COVID or nothing like that, but my, my gut is is uh, is doing somersaults at the minute. So I feel like I'm coming down with something. I don't know whether I've just eaten something over the weekend that hasn't agreed with me. But I know how important it is to kind of to, to stick to these and to, um, to, to come and see you lot on a Monday night. So it, we're still going to go ahead, but we, we might call it a bit shorter than normal. So... I apologise if we do well. I'll see how I feel as we go. And if I'm not my kind of lively self, at least you know why. Good evening, Anna, as well. How are you doing? Uh, Tasty Brain Drinks, and I'd be down for a week of live streams. Yeah, we might do it just to, just to kind of see. Like, maybe over the maybe over the Christmas when everybody's off, or maybe in the new year, just to kind of start the year off. I don't know. I'll have a think about it. Busy says, 12 days of Christmas live streams. And Lord Maiden saying, yeah, it would be the week before Christmas. <laughs> Joel, Joel Ridley says rough guts brings a new man into the live stream yeah, yeah I won't be doing that one and, and they're saying get yourself to bed to be honest if, if I go to bed I'm just going to go and lie on my phone or something anyway so uh, I might as well be here chatting to you a lot uh, and Joseph Sini had the same over the weekend I, di I did have a curry on Saturday night which which might not be uh, settling quite so well so who knows um, <laughs> it sounds like you need a Guinness VG saying I've just I've stuck with my, my hot black current mate that'll uh, that'll keep me uh, <laughs> George is saying chunder ball under the desk the less said about that, the better, mate. Anyway, um, we'll we'll start the kind of the main topic in a little bit. We'll we'll let a few folks um uh, creep in and stuff. But for those of you that don't know where this miniatures come from, um, Mantic Games over the weekend, um, twice a year they have an open day where you can go down to to Mantic Games HQ down in Nottingham. And you can kind of have a look around their site. You can go and have a look in the casting, uh, in the resin casting place. You can have a chat with the staff there. You can have a look around the warehouse. There's normally some kind of like little sneak peek rooms where, you, especially, you kind of like certain amount of people can get invited and maybe play test a, a kind of a new game coming up and sign those non disclosures. You get to see all the fab painted minis, all the uh, Angel Heraldus stuff in the cabinets. Um, and they do different seminars through the day where they talk about um, all of the different games that they do. Uh, obviously, COVID at the minute, restrictions, not being able to get together, lockdown, all that kind of stuff. They've done the 2020 Open Days as a virtual thing. Um, the first one they did earlier on this year, I think it was around May time it might have been. Um, and um, and then they've just done the latest one, which is not normally this weekend anyway. Um, and they've done that. they did that one at the weekend. I don't know whether Rob's in or whether Rob will ever come back and watch this or anything else, but I, I just want to say to, to Rob... Uh, Rob Berman from Mantic, he did basically pretty much about a seven-hour stream on Saturday. Kind of, he hosted each of the different uh, interviews and stuff as well. So, absolutely, um, I know what it's like to kind of do two or three hours um, live streaming for seven hours flat. He absolutely, I take my hat off to him. He did an absolutely cracking job, and the whole day was really interesting. I didn't manage to catch every single piece of every single one, but I kind of had it on the background sometimes, and I was and I was watching and doing bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, he did an absolutely fab job. So if anybody sees him or if he sees this, please pass on my kind of. I think he did an absolutely awesome job. Uh, and 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 to be fair, other companies haven't really kind of um, like some of them have obviously done stuff like GW have been doing kind of like a lot of reveals and things. They did one on Saturday, but they've certainly not been doing like full day reveals the way Mantic did. Um, and 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 I think in the current climate, it's. It's actually really nice. It's a nice thing to see. I mean, it's, like, it's his weekend as well, to be fair. You know, he's taken his whole weekend out to do that. So, yeah, they did, they did a good job. John Cena likes a palm more too, so that can't be bad. Yeah, so so well done all the Mantic guys for that. It went really smooth as well. What they did this time was, rather than keep stopping and starting the stream and trying to sort of link it all with Discord and stuff, they literally just pressed kind of um, stream first thing on Saturday morning and it streamed all the way through to about 5 o'clock. So, yeah, it was great. Um, So... Yes, so this this miniature, back to the point, this miniature was basically kind of released at the weekend um, as part of the Dreadball update. And, and the sci-fi update at the start of the day, which was basically Dreadball and Dead Zone, was the first of the um, of the different streams for the day. 
Um, and, and I, you, you know, I like I like Matic games. I, I tend like the, the games that they produce. I tend to find that they're quite straightforward. They're not too complex. Um, they they they're well priced. I tend to like a lot of what I do. I don't I don't like every miniature. I don't like every game. But more often than not, I, I kind of like what they do. So I was interested to see what was coming for the future. Um, and this mini popped up on Saturday. So that's that's where this miniatures come from. I'll come into a bit more detail about what Dreadball is, about how these minis fit in, a little bit more stuff that was released for it uh, when we kick off properly. But um, yeah, that's that's where it's come from. If anybody's wondering, um, where else we are? John's oh yeah, John's saying Rob is a top look like a Palmo. Uh, Lord Maiden saying he did an awesome job, even when stuff went silly. Stuff always goes silly. What they also did as well, which I found really interesting, is uh, Luigi, who is um, the kind of the main sculptor for Mantic. He sculpted like all of the Amara ships. He sculpted the Hellboy minis, that kind of stuff. Um, I think pretty much as you've seen um, the quality of, of Mantix minis going up over recent years, the vast majority of them have been sculpted by Luigi, and he is a really, really good sculptor. And he did a section on um, Saturday morning, I think it was the 11 till 1 slot, I think it was, where basically he was digital sculpting online while Rob was kind of interviewing him and chatting to him and stuff. And to watch somebody who really knows what they're doing with their uh, things like ZBrush and all that kind of stuff, um, it's fantastic to see just kind of in the real world where you'd see like a lump of clay if you like, and then it gets carved and gets made into a thing. He starts with basically like a, like a lump of <laughs> a lump of grey basically on the screen, and and then sculpts it away, and it, it's fantastic to see. Um, Steve saying he always loves the resin miscast room, always spend an hour in there every time. Yeah, Mantic, to be fair to them, are pretty, um, they're pretty hot on the on the miscasts and stuff, so they tend to, tend to throw a lot of stuff to one side. You can't re-kind of melt down the resin and use it again, so it just goes in a pile, and these open days, they sell all of those miscast stuff. However, you can get some like stuff that you would look at it and you'd be struggling to see it, or it would be a very easy repair, like a tiny little air bubble or something like that. And they sell it for pretty much like next to nothing. It's uh, so yeah, the the, the the miscast room is a good way to kind of uh, to get some really good stuff for kit bashing, for filling out bits of armies and stuff. Um, like Ronnie was saying, he'd built his Basilean ships from the miscast pile. One of the sails was damaged, um, and he decided he was going to damage all of the sails on his ships as if they'd been in the battle and the cannon balls had been through them and stuff. And he um, he showed some pictures of it today, and it looked really really good. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if you ever do get the Mantic next year, watch out for the miscast room. Um, Marcus says it looks like a pair of goblins performing the, the Muppet Man. I think they call, they call they're not called are they called Zeds or something? I think I forget the name of them now. Um, I knew that I knew that would come, uh, and I forget about it. I forget I forget what they're called now. My mind's my mind's gone blank, but no doubt no doubt we'll we'll find out what they are. Zs that's what they are, not Zeds. Zs they're a pair of Zs. Um, George is saying not forgetting six legged steeds yes uh, Brad says we're working on League of Infamy stuff right now yes the League of Infamy stuff obviously um, co also coming from Mantic yeah he has been working on that stuff um, Lord Bain says he was making a lizard head on ZBrush and it was good to see um, cloned monkeys Steve says that's what they are oh well there you go Z's cloned monkeys so how are we doing yeah we've got a good number and we might as well start the main chat so the title of tonight Basically, why this, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you what, what it was, um, if I can go to, why this was the mini that I needed. Um, and yes, this this is the miniature that's on the, on the front cover there. It is essentially, like people are seeing there, it's a couple of Zs, uh, one on top of the other, under, like sort of under a big overcoat, uh, and we'll go into a bit more detail about the mini itself, but um, I'll tell you why why this was kind of important and i'm sure i'm sure everybody else is kind of feeling this at the moment um you're probably feeling a little bit flat and um, people who are in lockdown people are not getting games it feels like it's been a really long year i think and i think it's fair to say and, and i'm seeing at the minute i'm seeing a lot of people who are really really kind of they've been massive hobbyists played loads of games tournament gamers and stuff I'm seeing people starting to sell things off, sell off their armies. There's one local guy to me who is an absolutely fantastic painter, um, pr primarily kind of 40k type stuff he tends to do, like Necromunda, that kind of things. Um, 
just seen him sell off all of his armies. Uh, he's getting kind of heavy into PC gaming instead. He's got a lovely PC set up now in, he, in his in his hobby room. A couple of monitors and a nice a nice PC and stuff. And I'm seeing people obviously picking up PlayStation Fives and uh, the new Xboxes. And I and I feel I feel like kind of miniature game at the minute. People are getting really really like ground down of just not getting games in, not being able to play very often, almost kind of being burned out on the hobby of like, well, what what am I even painting for if I can't even get games anymore? People are picking up things like in sales or they're picking up things because we're, oh, we're getting locked down. I, be, I better get a project or something to do and they're buying stuff and then they, they're realizing very quickly it's not really what they want. They were just buying something uh, for the sake of it kind of thing. And I, and I feel like there's a bit of a lull in the hobby at the minute. Companies are not really releasing anything. Um, aside from GW, who's, who have a constant release schedule, um, Although, to be fair, there's nothing from GW that's really kind of excited me, personally. I'm sure it does for other people, things like Blood Bowl and stuff, but for me, personally, there's nothing really kind of grabbed my attention. Um, Mantic's obviously done Amada, but outside of that, there's been pretty much next to nothing of any note coming out. So for me, as, a, as kind of somebody who does this full-time now, as a content creator or as a kind of community-type leader, if you like, however, whatever kind of wanky name you want to call me, um... It's quite it's quite hard to kind of come up with stuff to to constantly kind of talk about to to see what people are excited about because if people are not excited, it's quite it's quite hard to kind of to, to read that pulse of what's on and and if people are not excited, generally that means that there's not much for me to get excited about as well. And I'm really missing playing games. It's great talking about stuff. It's great painting stuff. It's great building stuff. It's great kind of um, going back and looking at some of my old stuff, but it's 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 quite flat and it's and it's quite exhausting i'll be honest at the, at the minute and i'm sure I, I definitely get the feeling everybody else or the vast majority of people are in a very similar boat no matter how much you like painting people are working from home they're sitting at the desk all day the last thing they want to do is probably sit at a desk all night and paint minis they want to kind of switch off they want to just kick back on the sofa and play xbox or something or they want to go and curl up on the sofa and watch a film and i feel like the hobby in general is a bit flat at the moment um combine that with i'm just um i'm personally kind of like i, I think lock, like lockdown and covid and everything else is getting to me personally it's getting to me from like kind of like a mental health point of view I'm, I'm just feeling tired of the whole thing this kind of nothing much to look forward to like no holidays like i can i can take a week off doing this i can make a load of videos and take a week off but then what am i going to do with that week kind of thing and i think that, that is just building up to a point where it's just like my god this is this is endless then on Saturday, I kind of sat down, cup of coffee. My wife had took my little one out. I think they'd gone to, they'd gone to the supermarket or something to get some bits and pieces in. And um, uh, and I and I sat down to watch the Mantic stream. I put it on the TV rather than on my phone or something like that. I just put it on the TV and sat with a cup of coffee. And then Rob started talking about this, the Dreadball stuff. And for Dreadball, they are essentially bringing out. If, if I can just, um, I'll flick up here that. Next March, they're going to bring a supplement out for Dreadball. Now, Dr Dreadball is a great game, and I'll come on to Dreadball in a minute. Dreadball, I would go as far as to say, it is definitely one of the most underrated games and underappreciated games. I would potentially go as far as to say it is the most underrated game. Um, but we'll come on to that stuff in a bit. So I was kind of listening with interest. It's a game I absolutely love. I don't play it often enough. We're hardly playing anything at the minute anyway. But it was interesting to see what something was coming for it. And what's coming basically is a, um, is a, is a supplement coming in March, which is called the uh, the Galactic Tour Mag Magneta Circuit. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's basically a um, new supplement, new miniatures, and it's essentially going to bring in some additional um, sort of special rules, if you like. So there's going to be four special pitches. I'll come on to those in a bit. And then there are four special minis as well which you can then kind of draft in to give you some bonuses. Now, um, these are three of them. So the three we've got here on the screen, uh, the one on the left is called Tracer. And she's a mechanic on the Dreadball circuit. It says the complex Dreadball gloves and the high-tech impact-resistant armor of the players regularly malfunction, but Bracer is always on hand to provide a quick fix. So from a rule perspective, she can add additional successes to your armor tests. So she's kind of repairing armor on the go and giving you a bit of an armor benefit. Uh, then in the middle there, <laughs> we've got uh, Flurple, the hydration. 
a little bit like the kind of the alien water boy there. This is inspired by the legendary Schnorkel. Flirtwell's only dream was to join the Dread Ball team. Unfortunately, he was simply too clumsy to play and instead decided to become a support assistant. Uh, Rules-wise, Flirtwell is able to add additional successes to the dash test. So this is to kind of make you a little bit, a little bit faster, if you like. And then the one on the right there is quite an interesting backstory. This one is either a referee in some games, or it's also an MVP, which are kind of the most valuable players, um, like star player type things. And it says, this miniature is Thoth. Uh, it's in, uh, when playing on the Memphis Max pitch, the Memphis Max pitch is one of the new pitches, and it's kind of like a Las Vegas style kind of gambling den. It says, uh, Thoth is a ref that rules with a keen eye and a quick turn of speed. But when they're not looking for sucker punches and stumps, Thoth is available as an MVP for your team. We're really excited to be getting back to the drag ball pitch. Um, so these were, the, these were the three. I thought, actually, I really like the sound of these four new pitches. It opens up the rules to actually bring, and it bring in sort of um, like nice neoprene pitches as well. Some alternative looking ones uh, with, with some themes. So I think the four pitches, if I can find any information on them here, I'm sure it tells me in here. Um, the four pitches are called um, Kavlax 6, which is a swamp pitch. And I think, uh, I, can't, I can't remember what, exactly what the swamp pitch does. There's a new Atlantia, which is an underwater pitch, which I think slows people down. There's Overstar 2, which is a sky pitch. It's almost like on a floating kind of like aircraft carrier in the sky. Uh, obviously, you can potentially fall off that. And then there's the Memphis Max pitch, which is like a casino style thing. So these were the different ones that they were shown. Then what we had was we had this guy. Now this guy is called uh, Head Coach and he is the fixer. It says a shady character whose past is shrouded in a cloak of mystery or more accurately, a massive trench coat. No one quite knows why, where Head Coach come from and often they don't even know what he's saying as he's seemingly able to talk with two voices at once and argue with himself. In-game head coach is able to give you additional successes to your distract tests. Now, I kind of looked at this miniature on Saturday, and I must admit, a kind of a big smile came across my face, and I, and I proper laughed out loud. I was sitting on my own. <laughs> I must have sounded like an, an absolute idiot. I kind of laughed out loud when I saw this. It There was just so much character this. The idea of it from a theme perspective, the sculpt that Luigi's done for it, like even just down to the fact that kind of the one that's up there on, on the shoulders there with his tie hanging over the, the, the one below his face, the way that one of the sleeves is too long hanging over his hand, the fake moustache and the big sunglasses. It just really kind of, it made me laugh out loud. It, it, it did. And I, and I kind of, it was at that point, I think, that it suddenly kind of dawned on me. We're, we're kind of forgetting about the fun side of all of this. Um, and... A lot of the minis that we paint and we build and the games we play are about kind of killing things. It's about carrying weapons around. It's it's always about some kind of confrontation type thing. Um, and there was just something about this mini that proper made me laugh when I saw it on Saturday. Um, it just has so much character. I would love to get it as like a, a three-up resin print or something, like that, even like an STL file to get somebody to print me one out. Uh, um, just to paint up to have on my desk because it it kind of... It, it, it sounds really stupid and a little bit far-fetched, but it kind of it kind of lifted me out of a bit of a miserable Saturday morning. I'll be honest, uh, and it made me think about like there are some stuff to look forward to. You know, it, it it doesn't have to be the most exciting thing in the world. It doesn't even always have to be a game for you play uh, that you play. If you see something that's just a bit fun and a little bit different, that might be just enough to kind of to give you a little bit of a nudge in the hobby. You know, for me, it, it made me, I, I went and I got my Dreadball box back out again. And I, and, I, and I kind of primed some minis ready to start painting up the Dreadball teams that I have in that box. And to play more games of it. I, me and my wife started playing it at the start of the first lockdown. And we were really enjoying it. And then you kind of, you get sidetracked and you want to play something else. And you want to do something different. Let me just go back to the, uh, the main screen. And it, 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 there was just something about the, the character, the fun side of it, the fact that it's it's not about it being overpowered. It's not about how well does it do in the game. It's not about kind of you know how, sort of what weapons does it carry, who's it gonna kill, how strong will it be. It was the exactly the kind of mini that I would I, I will buy this and I will paint it. And it might never even see the table, but it will sit on my desk. It's going to sit next to my monitor so that every time I'm sitting there, I kind of see this and I have that little wry smile. Because sometimes some games or some miniatures 
they're, they're not there just for for the game. Excuse me. <coughs> they're, they're there just for the fun and, and to, to remember why we play games in the first place. I think I just, I've just kind of gone through a, a few weeks of just of not really having anything to look forward to. Amado's here now when people are starting to get that as well. So that kind of initial kind of build up to that's kind of over. Um I'm like so that from, from like looking forward to that as a game is kind of over a little bit. Um there's nothing there's nothing much planned for the rest of the year. Companies are obviously kind of get, getting ready to wind wind down a little bit towards the back end of the year and have a little bit of a break. There's no sign of kind of gaming venues getting open again to or or to have people round to, to your home to play games. There's no holidays planned, any of that stuff. And it was just like it's it, it, the weirdest of things seeing that little, that little character of a miniature just brought a big smile on my face. And remember why our hobby can be really, really fun. And that's why this, this mini is the mini I needed. It's not the mini I need. It was the mini I needed right now. It was it was the thing that kind of brought a big smile on my face. It reminded me how good Dreadball is and about how how kind of underrated and underappreciated it is. And I'll talk about Dreadball in the coming weeks. I'm I'm gonna kind of do something. I think I might I might do a challenge about people painting up a Dreadball team. Rob Berman from Mantic this weekend um, shared that he basically just nothing to do with Mantic really, just purely from a fan fan perspective has made stats so you can use fantasy miniatures in the Dreadball rules. So if you're not even into the sci-fi side of it, he's made um, some fan-made stats so you can take your Blood Bowl teams and you can play play the Dreadball with it. The Dreadball rules are free. You can go to the Mantic Games website and download all of the stats and, and the rules for free just to have a look over it and check it out. I'm going to be playing some more of it. But yeah, it's like... It was just it, it 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 was one of those things where sometimes the the, the most obscure of things happen at, at the weirdest of times, and just sitting having a proper little belly chuckle at this miniature was just enough to kind of remind me just how fun, kind of our hobby can be sometimes. Anyway, let me uh, let me pop back. So that, that that's what it was. I told you it was a bit of a kind of a left field topic. It's not just about the hobby. It's sometimes about sometimes you need something a little bit of positivity, a little bit of humour or something just to kind of lift you a bit. Um, let's have a look. Where were we at? Steve Evans says he's been to the last nine. May was supposed to be number ten in a row. Yeah, I I don't think I've missed too many of them, mate. Um, I, I certainly remember going to some of the first ones, which were I think the first one I ever went to was the Warpath launch. So that will show you about how long ago that one was, and it wasn't in their current um building. It was somewhere uh, um some distance away now. Uh, Vigi says just splurged on a nice hot wire foam cutter for the mini swap base he's working on. I think I tend not to be kind of I don't do a lot of terrain and stuff to to invest in kind of terrain sort of tools and stuff. But then I I always see them and think they look cool. Um, Christian sharing the link for the Facebook community. Thank you very much, mate. Ed Handley, good evening to you. Um, Chris the Hill says Malifaux is a brand new faction dropping at the end of this month at the beginning of December. To be I, I I've said many times, mate. I love I love Malifaux, but I, I other than weird sharing it in their own Facebook group. Or on their own website, they don't really reach out. They they don't generate any kind of sort of excitement for their stuff. They just quietly in the background just release stuff to the people that kind of already play the game. Um, and and I find Malifaux's marketing is a bit lacking. If I'm perfectly honest, if I'm if I'm being honest about it, the game, from what I read the read of the rules and from what I remember playing of previous editions, is great. I love the card mechanic. I love the minis. I, I absolutely love the universe of Malifaux. They ju they just don't shout about it, and that, and that kind of pe people people want to get excited about stuff. They don't really engage outside of of their own very tight knit community, and that's that's my that's my kind of my problem. I think with a lot of miniatures companies, to be fair, not not just um not just weird. Uh, Blizzard saying there took me a hot minute to, to get a device. Hello, Blizzards, how are you doing? Uh, VG says that one on the right looks pretty cool. I, yeah, I think that one was. If I go back and remember which one it was, it was. Uh, yeah, that was the kind of the uh, the the MVP. Was he called Thoth? I think it was. He was called. Um, Jimmy G says late in, but have a glass of Dalwini Winter's Frost. So I don't care. I'm in a happy place. I tell you what, me, I'd have had a cheeky whiskey. I think tonight if I uh, if I didn't feel like dog shit. <laughs> um, Steve's saying, I love the middle one. Yeah, it's a, it's a blurple or something like that he's called. 
uh, flirt, but that was it. Um, Tasty Brain Drains, I think they said the Swamp Pitch has vines that can grow and ensnare people. Thanks, but I think that was it, actually. I couldn't remember it. Uh, <laughs> Vijay Singh, yeah, thanks. Great. Marcus says, head coach is absolutely goofy in the best possible way. Like I said, I, 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 would, I would love to be able to buy that as a, as a three-up resin miniature. I don't know whether anybody else would want it, but um, with digital files and stuff these days, I would love to be able to kind of... Uh, to get that printed somehow and, and just to have it as a, as a like a almost like you know i was talking the other day if, if anybody was around for last week's um wednesday hobby hangout i was saying i wanted something a bit different to paint just like rather than painting kind of pieces for um like for games and stuff I, I wanted something a little bit different to kind of to challenge me as a painter to see kind of how far my paintings come rather than just painting for speed and things that is the exact kind of mini that i would love to have as kind of like six inches tall did you like as a, as an ornament as on my shelf or something like that? That's exactly the kind of thing I would like. Uh, George is saying uh, as if sphere weren't hard enough already, they can play it on an underwater pitch. Yes, uh, VG says that's why I like Blitzball. It's about the silly fun. I get bored of games that are all about killing. It, it's you you kind of forget this actually, but ninety nine percent of the games we play are combat oriented. It's no surprise they're called war games. Very few of them. Are actually about anything that isn't about hitting somebody, defeating somebody, killing somebody. Um, you do get some games which are kind of scenario driven, but in the main, even kind of like like arena combat games, things like um, things like God Tier, which I love, is still about kind of like it's about area control, but you're still trying to take out champions. You're still trying to take out uh, followers. Um, games like um, Super Fantasy Brawl, for all you're trying to get those objective cards, you still score points for taking out enemy champions. You can still score um, like sort of victory points. Um, it, even things like um, what's it called? My mind's gone blank. Aristia from Corvus Belly, which again is meant to be like a sports game. It's like a sports arena game. You're you're still kind of taking out. You're still hitting your opponents. Um, where Dreadball tends not to be like like that. It, it, it genuinely is a sports game. And the scoring mechanic, if for those that aren't familiar, it, it, it's very similar to, uh, to God Tier in terms of if you score two points, then you're winning 2-0. If, if your opponent scores three points, then they're winning 1-0 because it takes away your two and it goes across to their side. And it's this tug-of-war mechanic across the side. The rules itself are, are, are pretty straightforward. There's nothing too technical. On the back of the rule book, there's a there's a um, like a quick reference guide. You can almost play the game after like, after never reading the rules. You can almost play the game just reading that. And um, I, I would urge anybody to to go to Mantic's website, download the free rules, and just have a look over them. Like I said before, I, I would probably go as far as to say that it is probably the most underrated game. I I don't like every team. Like I think some of the sculpts are not the best. I'm not I'm not the, the biggest fan of some of the teams. But there there are a lot of teams. Um and that's one of the reasons why Mantic doesn't do more teams for it. It's one of the reasons it doesn't get like it doesn't get more releases because to be honest, there's probably about 26, 30 teams already available for the game. The thing the game doesn't need is more teams. I mean, I've looked online to see if I can get like alternative sculpts. I'd even potentially get a 3D printer to print out some alternative kind of teams and things. Use the same rules or the same kind of stats that's already there, but use them on different miniatures and things. Do, do I want to kind of try and kid bash something using using other minis and things as a bit of a uh, like a kid bash project? Um, so even if the even if the minis don't necessarily kind of call out to you, the rules themselves are massively massively underrated and i do urge people just to go and read them and and kind of decide for yourself really it's free to do that um tony says welcome to my world and there's so much fun and funny minis out there just to play with what the heck i find it a proxy in or just paint it up and love it for what it is pure fun yeah it's uh, that's kind of it me I, I i tend not to paint stuff just for fun and that's not because i'm like like it's not because like i'm some kind of competitive gamer it's more because I tend to be painting stuff to review it. I tend to be painting stuff to play it. I love playing games. I really enjoy the playing side of it. And I'm really missing that. And, and I think that's part of what's kind of 
getting me into that, that little bit of a slump, really. I, I miss the playing side of it. I miss painting things in order to get them to the table. Um, and, I, and I know other people feel the same way as well. It's not, it's not just me. Uh, Rob's saying he's only played a couple of games of Dreadball, but really enjoyed them. Uh, Start you saying slow grow Dreadball team challenge then. Yeah, it might be a nice one. I mean, like I say, if people, people can paint what they like. It might be. I, I think I'm probably going to paint some of what's in the starter box. I might. I might even treat myself to kind of um, to a new team. It's only like twenty quid for a team, and 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 all of the minis that are available for that team are, are in those boxes. It's not like it's an expensive uh, sort of game to to, to pick up. Uh, Marcus is it's like AOS, like AOS Slambo, which was there somewhere, and I can't see it now. Uh, makes me laugh. It reminds me of an Adventure Time tra character. To be honest. The last time I kind of saw characters like this, where I just thought, they're just fun, they're just interesting, there's something really nice, was when I got the Drowned Earth, um, the Aliyah Chronicles, um, and uh, the guys at uh, All My Games sent me through the, the minis um, to play through that demo for the, for the Kickstarter. Um, and, and they were the same, they were just kind of fun adventure characters which which didn't really feel like they were from from another game i didn't feel like i was just painting similar kind of sci-fi tropes if you like or anything like that um and actually that and then looking through the drowned earth stuff really like, oh, they, like painting dinosaurs like things like that it, that was probably the last time i've really picked some stuff up and thought like wow that, these are really different if you like um uh, where were we at there? Steve's saying, I love Dreadball. I know you're a big fan of it, mate, aren't you? Uh, George is saying, it reminds me of Heisenberg. <laughs> it has got, with the hat on, I know exactly what you mean there, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, I, I can picture something, it might it might be like Gremlins or something. There is definitely something I have seen where there's like characters inside with a big overcoat zipped up uh, and a hat on, and I can't think what it is, but yeah. Robert saying, yeah, could do a dread ball slow grow. I'll have a little think about it. It's not it's not something that would take a lot of time and uh those that are not interested don't don't have to do it. You could kind of pick something else, pick a little sci-fi kind of war band or something for something else. But yeah, we might do. Just just to give people something a little bit something to focus on, a bit of a challenge. Because yeah, I I've kind of not really picked up another challenge in a while. Uh VG said now I have to figure out how to get a set over here in Australia. You not get a set of uh, dread ball over in Australia, mate. Um, if you if you can't let me know, I'll I'll help sort that out. Um, George is saying love the game, but haven't played it in around a year. Linking into one of your other streams, I went all in and haven't played all the teams or pitches, version one or version two. I bought the version one uh, one originally as well, and I still have that version two. Isn't hugely different for anybody that's already bought version one. Um, the pitch is still the same as an example. Um, but but yeah, this this version two. Dreadball box um, tends to be really reasonably priced. You, certainly, if you pick it up from um, like third-party sellers and stuff, they tend to tend to have some sales on it and stuff. It's because it, it's not that new anymore now, but it's absolutely kind of still uh, still the same game, if you like. And the stuff that's coming out next year is is like a, like a supplement. It's like an expansion to this, if you like. It's something you don't have to play, but it's just something that adds to it. So if if you were kind of keeping one eye on it to 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 buy the supplement in the future and you haven't played the standard game, picking up the standard game wouldn't be kind of outdated by the time this new stuff comes along. Um, ER 910 or ER 910 says, that figure looks fun. I want to paint the plastic goblins from Mantic, even though I have no use for them. I'm starting to think now about just, just painting stuff for painting stuff's sake, especially with not being able to kind of get gaming in. Like I say, it, it makes it quite hard for me to come up with topics. It makes it quite hard for me to, th to think about content because not only does it need to kind of inspire me, it needs to kind of be, it needs to be something that you folks want to watch as well. So I kind of, I, I really, I, I've got a list of some stuff and I've got some things that I, I've kind of got on the back burner, but um, it, it's quite hard at the moment. It's quite, it's quite hard to, like there's games I want to review, but I know for a fact I'm not I'm not going to be able to review them without playing enough games of them. Like things like um, Bot Wars, for example. The guys from Bot Wars sent me that over a while ago, and I've just not had the opportunity to play it to a level where I I could honestly give you a, a an informed opinion on it. There's no point me just playing it once and going, oh well, I like this and I don't like that. I need to play it off. Like I need to play enough games of it to be able to give a real honest opinion. Otherwise, it's not a review. It's just a kind of like a first glance at it and. 
it's 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 not fair on on them uh, a company if if i kind of um sort of praise or dismiss it based upon one game of it or something or, or playing it solo against myself just to see how it works um and it's not fair upon you as kind of people who may then go and pick up a game if i'm sort of if i'm sort of saying nice things about it after one game and then after three games find actually it doesn't matter who you play all the teams feel like the same like all the all the things feel the same so so why would you why would you play one over the other for example so yeah it's it's i think we're just i think we're coming into winter the lockdown stuff's just been like that the, is dragging on and obviously we're filming up more today about it extending it just it just knocks you a little bit flat from a kind of from a, um, a positivity point of view at times and I and I get affected by it the same way everybody else does. It's it's alright kind of putting a brave face on and and yes I get to do this for a living and I get to do something I love, but when there's not a lot to talk about, you I ha I have to really kind of I have to make sure that the, that I, I can I can find stuff because the last thing I want to do is just sit here on a Monday and just go, well just no, no, nothing's really happened. What do you want to talk about? That, that's not very interesting. That that doesn't bring people into a live stream, does it? It just certainly doesn't want you, make you want to come back on a regular basis. Um, Christian Sherling there for the Patreon. Thank you very much, Christian. Awesome, mate. Uh, Mark's in, sorry, he's late. Steve said he's on the Thatcher's Rose tonight. I, I Well, I hope, first of all, I hope I'm feeling better on Wednesday for my birthday. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to treat myself to, to a nice little tipple on, on Wednesday, I think. So I'll be, I'll be joining you a lot. Um, where, oh, I'll just scroll back a bit because it just jumped on quite, quite somewhere there. Uh, CXG says, sorry to hear you're not at the best of times lately this year. It hasn't been the easiest to say the least. Glad you found something to put a smile on your face, though. It's a great looking model. I, I mean, I, I don't want to kind of come across as like, like, woe is me or anything like that. I, it, I, it's, I've had a tough year at times, but no worse than anybody else kind of thing. Like, it's, if anything, like, it, it, there's been some real high points to this year. Um, I just it, it's an adjustment for me. I, I've gone from working for a company for fifteen years where I travelled a lot and I kind of I worked in a big company where I was constantly working with other people, and and I've come to a point where my job is I kind of I work on my own if you like, um, I I sit in this room most days, and it's come at a time when I can't get out and socialise. I can't get out and play games. I can't get out and visit companies to do interviews and to chat with people and stuff, um, which is what I plan to do. So it's kind of that that is kind of exasperated a little bit, I think. So yeah, I, I'm absolutely fine. It's not, nothing to worry about, but it's just you know you, you go through kind of peaks and troughs, and, and the same way a lot of people are at, with it, with the current sort of situations. Um, Ian says one page rules is a game jam for mini games about synergy as the theme, but a lot of the non combat ones seem more like board games than mini games. Not sure where the line is between the two. It, it, it does seem funny that most most games instantly become kind of adversarial don't they they instantly become about combat um and I, and I if anybody knows any if anybody can think of any games that are not just about combat and shooting and it'd be nice that it would be nice just to kind of to have something a little bit different um steve says dread in my eyes is the best sports game on the market rules wise yeah i i, I potentially wouldn't disagree with you mate I, i'm a big fan of blitz ball um i think james hewitt did an absolutely fantastic job of boiling down blood bowl a game that i'm not hugely sort of um big on uh, and but and boiling it down is something that is a lot more fun it's less about the sport if you like and it's about kind of it's about pleasing the crowd and and kind of um getting into sort of certain situations engineering things to happen for you to score points and that and that makes it really fun you then add on the fact that GW makes some really nice minis, uh, and it's a really fun sports game. But I would say that that Dread Ball um, it hasn't really changed since second edition launched. And, and uh, is there a date on this? I can't. I'm just, I'm just trying to look now to see if to see if there's a date when this launched. I can't see anything at the minute. Um, but it's been around for a while, and it's never really changed. And everybody that plays it absolutely loves it. You don't really hear people saying. Oh, well, I've tried it a few times, but it's not really for me. You tend to find people play it and, and love the game, or they've t tended to not try it. Um, very few people kind of just say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's dull or whatever. They might not be able to get opponents very easily, but certainly when, when times were a bit more kind of um, social, there was a lot of dreadball events dotted about. You might have had to travel for them, but there were certainly plenty of dreadball events to attend. Um... 
Josh Price says, I've seen them, this miniature on my mini factory, which is a dwarf hiding in a barrel. It made me laugh so much. I'm going to 3D print it this week. I'm honestly, it, it's kind of, a, it, it's made me almost just want to go and buy a 3D printer just to kind of print out some random sort of stuff that I, I would never in a million years normally sort of have any need for. Uh, Vijay Singh just started painting with a size 4 brush with a good tip after a lifetime of painting with small brushes. I can see why people talk it up. Yeah, honestly, mate, like a big brush doesn't mean it has no detail or any control to it. It just means it holds more paint. Um, and you can like kind of like slap it on if you like and get the base coats down fast. But you can you can paint eyes with a size 4 brush as long as it's got a good tip. Uh, James Bray, good evening to you, fella. How are you doing? John says, I get that slump. I tend to paint to play. I enjoy the painting, but usually I'm thinking of getting them on the table and what they'll do. But the thought of Amada has got me excited again. It's it's. Do you know what it is, mate? If I hadn't got the Amada stuff through, um, to obviously like sort of a few months ago to be already working on them and things, I, I'd have been on that same hype train with everybody else. I think it's just that for me, the the build up to Amada has kind of it's. Like I was excited for it, and I and I still love the game. I was still excited to see the new stuff coming, but because I'm kind of ahead of the curve a little bit, I I got to see the stuff. I got to have them in my hand. I got to play the game before everybody else. Like that that excitement curve has has, has been a lot flatter for me, and I think I've kind of missed out on the excitement a little bit, which is a, is a, it, it's a shame in one respect, but it's absolutely awesome in the other. Um. Um. Ed saying, 100% with you there, I, I paint to play, and some days it's tough to sit down and paint, even though I know I'll feel good when the minis are on the table are finished. I think it's another, another one of it is, I think for me personally, is is knowing that kind of, when is it work and when is it hobby and stuff, and it was another reason why I was saying about painting something completely different, something like this mini as a three up would be perfect, that it's, that it's definitely not kind of work in that respect at that point. Um, let me just... Got some little pop up just come up there for trying to get me to download an update. I'll just get rid of that before that starts. Um, what else we'll do? Lord Maiden says, Elijah Chronicles was like April or May, it's been a while. Yeah, it was, it was the first thing I, 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 I might have been the first video I made, um, when my redundancy was confirmed. I think so. Yeah, it, it was quite going back some time, I think, mate. Um, Starty's man case says he picked extreme up for a tenner bargain for a miniature game in GW terms it was free yeah John says dreadball starters only 30 quid on Amazon get it through Andy's link thank you very much mate yeah it's um, it's not ex I mean even if you bought it purely as a board game just to play the the, 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 the two teams that are in there I would show you them but they're they're, they're primed <laughs> over there um, even if you just bought it as a board game like 30 quid isn't, isn't, ain't a bad deal at all um, and actually all of the stats for the teams so these are like these are the ones that are in the box where it has the the different stats for the teams that are included um, but if you go if you go to the free download from manic it has the stats for every single team that they do so you could just use your own minis you, you could make something from something completely different you can 3d print stuff um, if you wanted to um, I'm trying to think if it if it tells you how many like does it does it recommend how many players are in a team? I forget now. Uh, off the top of my head. Um three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think you have like eight players uh, in a team. So you're not we're not talking about like a lot of a lot of minis basically to, to kind of to three D print or to buy and paint or whatever the case may be, or to uh, kit bash them or anything. Um Jared Harris, good evening, Jared. How are you doing? Start you seen oh yeah you just seen how um, Mark was seen it was the Muppets and um, Mark said it was Gremlins certainly did that I, I think that's what maybe what I'm kind of thinking of mate Jimmy G says minions they dressed up like that as well maybe it's a bit more in popular culture than I remember Jim says his five mini dioramas planned for winter Kings of War dwarfs Blood Angels undead Blood Bowl team Burrows and Badgers and Carnivale um one two three I, I thought I'd, I thought I'd counted six there mate yeah five Ian says might be interested interesting to do a non gaming mini paint challenge yeah i like what uh vg was doing the other night which was his um the kind of the the, the rat mickey mouse thing that kind of stuff i think is really fun george has seen his games night for the past 20 years was a monday night and missed it dreadful but of course it means that enjoying the stream live <laughs> every cloud mate uh vg saying yeah cheers yeah it's hard to get mantic stuff if it's older stock i'll have a look to see what i can grab and let you know yeah it's certainly not 
they're not too expensive here, mate. I'm sure we'll we'll be able to sort something if uh, if you if you struggle with it, mate. Um, Christian has just found a 3D printable dreadball team based on the technical alien miniature. 50 quid on his mini factory. I'd have to do a little bit of digging, mate, because it would be nice just to kind of mix some stuff in and 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 you know maybe as a bit of a just as a bit of a, a palate cleanser, as a bit of a refresh. From my point of view, I just like to see people play the game. I'd love to see people pick it up and play the game. Um, just just to give it a try and see what it's like. Play it with tokens. Don't don't even paint any minis. Just p play it with tokens if you want to, just to kind of give it a try. Um, VGC, and hence why I'm going to cost me a fortune to get a dead zone set. Ah, I didn't realise that. I, mean, I just assumed that it was just with them being out of stock that you were struggling. Mark says he's got both V2 and Extreme. I haven't got the Extreme one, I'll be honest. I, I purposefully didn't buy it when it was cheap, even though it was like a tenner or something. Because I was I was trying to be good and I was thinking like you just you're buying stuff because it's cheap, you don't need it, you won't play it, you've got too many other things to do, don't do it. I'm kind of regretting it now a little bit, but yeah. Um Let's have a little look down the chat here. Um Marco Marco saying there, uh, good evening Marco by the way. Blood Bowl Snotlings are on his wish list just for the fun looking minis. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um Dreadball Ultimate, yes. I think well, I think Dreadball Ultimate is the multiplayer one. Dreadball Extreme is kind of like the um, like street <laughs> street Dreadball. I think. Um, Kieran saying, "Evening all. Hope everyone's good. Good evening, Kieran. How are you doing, mate?" Uh, Barry Kleber says, "What did I miss? Better late than never." I kind of, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much you did miss, mate. But uh, it'll take me all that time to recap it. So yeah, it's probably easier to go back and watch it from the start later. Uh, Jared saying lockdown is hard. Makes me realise how much I love going to the pub and seeing my mates. I'm going to have about twenty beers when they're open. Happy birthday for Wednesday, mate. It was my it was my eighteen year old son's birthday last Thursday, uh, and like I, I could I couldn't take him for a beer. I, I couldn't I couldn't take them to the pub. Pubs are locked down. Everything's locked down in the UK at the minute. I couldn't I couldn't even take them to the pub on their eighteenth birthday. And I think that was kind of on my mind at the weekend as well. It was really hard to like like. Almost that kind of like rite of passage of of taking taking my sons to the pub for a beer on their eighteenth birthday, and I didn't get to do it. And I think that was kind of playing on my mind at the minute. Like we're trying to plan to 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 have a, a like a day out and go for a few beers when lockdown releases. But like we're hearing tonight that it looks like we're essentially going to be in lockdown under a different name kind of thing. So I even even that's not going to be the easiest thing to do. So I, I think there's just a number of things just kind of playing on my mind at the minute. Obviously, I'm, I'm I'm not feeling great today either, so I don't know whether I was kind of coming down with something at the weekend as well. Might have been kind of playing on my mind, all these things. But uh, yeah, it's 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 tough for people. It's tough, man. And and I I didn't go to the pub very often. I I'd be lucky if I went to the pub probably once a month. But I don't I didn't I don't think I realised just how much I missed that. Just kind of like that once in a blue moon, just go and kind of kick back and mentally switch off and have a few beers. Uh, Krabby says, tell you what would cheer you up a rig anti rendition, <laughs> give the people what they want <laughs> come on mate, let's get you on the street Marcus is a board game not about violence, snakes and ladders and candy land, I found out the other day actually, the, the origin of snakes and ladders, or um, shoots and ladders as it's called in America and the origin of it was about um, I think it was, was it based on an um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the origin of it, and then I've kind of forgotten about it now. I don't know if it was based on like an, an Indian kind of proverb type thing of like climbing the ladders to like towards heaven or something, um, by doing good deeds, um, but like sort of like falling down that there, like snakes as kind of a, as a punishment. Um, I, f I forget, I forget where I saw it. Now. It was it was on a YouTube video I was watching about kind of the differences between UK games and uh, US games and Snakes and Ladders was on there but yeah it, it was it was almost like a tale of morality as opposed to be like supposed to be like a kid's game um, Jared says games generally follow two formats competitive against each other or cooperative with others and competitive against an opposing team I saw a lecture about it a while ago I think it's a, it's a survival thing I think we uh, uh, this might be a subject for another live stream basically but like the, 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 we, we play games and we find games interesting because they they create challenges for us, they create problems for us, and actually, as humans, we all say that we wish we had less problems or we wish we didn't have any problems. Or, like if we won the lottery, everything would be fine, kind of thing. But actually, it's problems that make us happy. Because if we didn't have any problems, 
you 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 don't have anything to kind of to worry about you have nothing to do and that's not very fulfilling so you don't want big problems you don't want problems you can you can't solve but the feeling of kind of well-being and the feeling of happiness and the and the elation of solving a problem something particularly kind of difficult and solving that problem is what creates kind of happiness for us and it's one of the reasons why we do crosswords why we do puzzles why we play games why we play video games why we like to kind of challenge each other why we like to be competitive it's the feeling of kind of of, of winning something or, or or solving a puzzle or solving a problem that gives us that kind of almost endorphin rush at the end of it um and it's one of the reasons why 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 games are, are really fun and, and why and why they kind of why people enjoy playing games even when you don't win the social aspect of it as well but um yeah certainly certainly winning really releases more endorphins that's for sure um cxgc i didn't take it as woe as me i think everyone's struggling it's refreshing to have someone be so open about how they're feeling always appreciate how open you are about feelings and mental health yeah i can't say i i always have been in the past it's it certainly suggests something i'm um i kind of aware of that actually in our hobby and there's because there's a vast portion of people that watch me or or male and probably don't feel that they can talk about stuff um I kind of I, I feel that like it's only fair that if, if I'm feeling a bit down in the dumps I kind of I, I share it without trying to bring everybody down with me share it in a, in a positive light as to like you, you're not on your own you know other people other people who you might think are kind of all full of kind of laughs and smiles and stuff also have kind of shitty days as well that's all um Josh is saying there's lots of good deals on 3d printers on Amazon for Black Friday I saw that mate and I and I'm, I'm really torn I was looking today actually and I'm torn, excuse me, <coughs> dry throat there, excuse me, I'm, um, I'm kind of torn between buying like an Elegoo Mars because they're like 130 quid or something, they're really cheap, or do I just bite the bullet and, and go and buy like a 4k one and like a, like a photon X or something like that, do I just, do I go and pay like 350 pound and, and, and actually buy like would I, would I be happier in the long run buying a much much better printer for a bit more money rather than rather than just getting something because it's cheap and I think that's what's ca that's what's catching me between the like spending three hundred and fifty pound or four hundred and fifty pound on a printer at the minute is a lot of money like I don't I don't I don't earn a lot of money these days now it's not like I've got like a kind of like the the job like I used to do so I have to be really careful with the money I spend so that that's not like an in, like an insurmountable amount of money where for like 130 140 quid it's it's a little bit more like actually for that it's it's maybe worth a bit of a gamble but i know i'll probably wish i'd i'd bought the better one and that's why i think i'm kind of caught between a rock and a hard place at the minute marcus is saying on the other hand settlers of Catan. to be honest i i play a couple of, i play a couple of board games with my with my wife i play one called brothers which is about um two brothers basically trying to sort of take over um, bits of a, of a, a farmland field to put their animals into pasture um, and like kind of claiming uh, sort of bits of tiles and stuff um, like an area control like tile placement game thing that's not obviously combat we obviously play things like um, Pandemic which actually <laughs> great timing um, but again it, it's cooperative it's not like combat as such um, I suppose you're, you're attacking the viruses I suppose um, we, what else do we play we just played one of those exit games at the weekend. Again, we we kind of love just sol solving puzzles, kind of things. You know, like like kind of testing your brain. And um, it's weird because in the jo in the job I used to do, like my job was was creative as well, albeit slightly different. But it was product development, so it it was coming up with solutions to problems. How do how do I create this product to to but make it for that price? How how do I make it fast enough? so we can kind of um, sort of meet demand and all that kind of stuff. So my brain was constantly kind of tested, and whilst it wasn't interesting, it was a constant challenge. These days, because I'm creating my own workload, I'm not necessarily kind of challenging myself that way. And playing games would, would kind of fill that gap if I, if, I was playing, if I was playing games, but I'm not. So I think it's I think it's just a, it's just the current situation. I still love what I do. It was still the best decision I ever did. But I think um, I need to find a way to challenge myself a little bit. I think 
like I've, I've tried kind of doing different editing techniques and I've tried kind of learning new ways to do things, which is, which is helping. But um, yeah, it's just, it's finding, we talk about new normal when it comes to kind of coronavirus and stuff. It's more about a new normal for me and, and understanding for myself. I've never worked for myself before. So I've never had that freedom of just, well, just do what you want kind of thing. And, that, and that's obviously not having anybody to bounce ideas off, not not playing new games to kind of to, to generate new ideas. It all, it all just kind of plays into that, I think. Um, uh, where are we up to there? Mm. Well, that's, there was quite a lot of comments there. I just kind of jumped ahead if I, quite quick there. Where are we at? Um, Christian sharing the link there for the merch as well. Thank you very much, Mace. I was there. Uh, I went. I had a, a bit of fresh air this morning. Went for a walk and uh, just to try and kind of get some fresh air. Uh, rocking my new my new woolly hat. Um, Carla says, "Death Goddess in saw me Kickstarter has me tempted, but I'm such a mediocre painter. The quality of sculpt is a waste on me. Never ever worry about that. That you're not doing it for somebody else. You're not painting it as a commission painter. As long as you're happy about it, like don't don't worry about it. Honestly, it's like even if you just base coated them and dry brushed them, if you're happy with them at the end of it, there's nothing wrong with that. And when I say a base coat, I literally mean prime them black, dry brush them grey, like make them look like stone kind of thing. Even that is great. Tony says, managed to glue on one minute together since the start of the stream. Shadow Stalker, Shroud Queen, a bit fiddly, but <laughs> it is a little bit fiddly, mate, I'll be honest. But there's something about those new war cry minis. Excuse me. <laughs> you don't want to know. There's something, there's something about those new war cry minis that I like a little puzzle, and you almost have to kind of line them up. And it's one of them things where you, where you line them up, and then it's like, oh, they just slot together perfectly. So I do like them, actually. Um, Krabby said, I got a couple of Tamiya kits for a change of pace. Uh, I haven't said that. I was satisfied once I'd built them back to Marines now. I bought myself a, um, a Churchill tank kit, a Tamiya one, to, as a bit of a change of pace. It's still in the box down there. To be fair, I, I might as well take it back. Uh, Lord Maiden says, I find the opposite for me because I work on my bed and not on a desk properly. I find I can paint at night and relax while doing it. I also paint what I like, not what to play the minis. Yeah, and, and I think it depends... I've, I generally paint to play over time. Um, and, and whilst I enjoy painting, um, it's been a long time, I think, since I've done it purely for relaxation. And, and I think the problem I've got is at the minute is the minis I've got to paint are stuff that I've bought to paint to play, really. So I don't really have anything that is just purely for the love of painting, if you like. That's why I was saying on last week's stream, it would be nice to have something completely different, I think. Fiji says the missus ate the last of last. Oh, he's talking about his, uh, his chocolates and stuff. Tony's just finished base coating his bike with dark blue colour shift. I've never tried the colour shift stuff, mate. What do you think of it? Fiji's saying he's painting Mickey Mouse Rip Jr. now. Uh, Low Ben says, I finally need to paint. I need to play the game before committing to painting the models first. So if I don't like the game, I can paint something I would play with again. Yeah, I, I do get that, mate, in general. Um, when I say I paint the player, um, it tends to be like, I've kind of already decided I, I want to play the game. If you like, I've, I've either played it before, or it's like a new army, or it's um, or it's something for a review or something like that. So I tend not to paint stuff to to then play something and decide I don't like it. If you like, um, Moxin does manage have sci-fi goblins. Surprised if not knowing how much Rob loves goblins. They do have sci-fi goblins. Me, I'm ju I'm looking at the teams here now. Let me see what they're called. I think if I remember right. They look a little bit like Judge Dredd, if I remember right. Um, uh, there they are. They're called... Well, they're a hobgoblin team. Uh, they're called the Rallying Roses. Um, and the way they've been painted up, they, they do look a little, look a little bit drop, uh, a little bit like um, Judge Dredd. Um, James says his family's poking him to, uh, to add things to Amazon list for Christmas. How easy to pick up is God tier, suitable for his wife to play who isn't a gamer. Um, yeah, I would say so, mate. I, I've played it with my wife. Because in the starter box, you play one champion versus one champion. That keeps the game relatively straightforward. So for, for non-gamers, it's not it's not too bad. All of, the, all of the information, all of the things that your characters can do are on the cards, on the table, in front of you. And then if you get into it a little bit more, you kind of scale the game up to play like two champions each 
or three champions each, which is kind of like the full scale game. So yeah, I, I don't find it uh, too difficult, mate. And certainly one player versus one player, uh, so one champion versus one champion, is it, like you might enjoy just playing that and never feel the need to buy another another kind of miniature. If you like, if you watch about the review I did a little while ago, that'll explain it a little bit more in depth, basically about how uh, how the game plays uh, and and basically how much information you have on cards in front of you. Uh, Busey saying Dreadball Extreme is still nine ninety nine. I'm at excite. I might pick it up purely just for a for a um, for a team to paint. Um, Steve saying it's worth it just for the teams. Yeah, the convict actually. I really like the convict team. If I'm honest, it's probably one of the uh, the few teams that I really really like. So it's probably the cheapest way to pick it up. Um, Stu saying his his missus beat him when he introduced it to God tier. She's not a gamer. Yeah, I think my missus beat me as well. Actually, the first game we played. Um, Lord Maiden says, I know what you mean. It's been hard and weird for everyone. Wish everyone the best. They can find some sort of relief soon. Yeah. James is saying, so which of the God tier starters is the best? I prefer, I forget what, what they're called now. Oh, what's the names of them? Let me let me bring it up and I'll tell you which one I prefer, mate. Uh, God tier starters. Um, the Borderlands one, mate, is, is my preferred one of the two, which is the like the blue and yellow one. That's the one I would recommend. Um, Krabby says, why do you think there has to be conflict in minigames? And I guess every story has a good guy and a bad guy. I think it's purely just because without conflict, mate, you um, there's no reason for the game to take place. I think I think that's... Like, even, even Dread Ball, but to, because it's sport, there's still conflict. It's just not violent. I mean, there's a bit of kind of pushing and shoving, but it's not violent conflict with, with weapons and stuff. It, it's more sports combat uh, like sort of sports competitiveness if you like um i think it's just i think it's just like most games like most games there has to be a like um a winner and a loser if you like even if you're playing cooperatively against the game you're trying to beat the game like at the weekend i was playing um unraveled 2 on my playstation uh with my with my oldest lads and it's a two-player game where you're basically just trying to help each other through the level. These two little kind of wool characters are attached together by a piece of wool, and like you're kind of you're swinging your report, like your your kind of your teammate across gaps and stuff, and helping each other out. It was just nice to play something that wasn't like, it wasn't violent. It it wasn't it wasn't like it had nice peaceful music in the background, all of that kind of stuff. We then went on and played played FIFA later on, and kind of. They're starting to like scream and shout like, no, there's no way, there's no way I was passing that way. That was a through ball. That was it. all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just it's just a nice change of pace to play something that isn't always sort of sort of guns blazing, if you like. Um, like even burrows and badgers is still battling, even though they're kind of like fluffy, cute animals. There's still a battle going on. Um. I don't think one pair of war bands is more difficult than the other. No, I don't think they're more difficult, mate. I purely just think, um, from an aesthetic point of view, I, I think I prefer the Borderlands one. The um, the I forget what she's called now. Is it Nye? The green one that's in the other box. I forget her name now. Um, I just think I think she's the least the least nice looking minis of the four that are in the starter sets. That's the only reason I would say. Um. INC and Frozen Sonic Mini 4K is a little cheaper. Monochromatic and 4K. Yeah, that's the one I'd kind of seen, mate, to be fair. Mark will say, next year the 4K printer will be 150. It will be, mate, but then I'll be saying, I should probably get that 8K one now that they're out. It's like everything you almost feel that like you should... Like, it, I have a feeling that buying old technology is never a good idea, if you like. Like, that, it never feels... Even if they're cheap, like they're cheap for a reason. It's because they need to shift them, cost the new the new ones out a little bit. And and I always feel like if I had one, I don't think I'd be paying the money to upgrade to to kind of a more expensive one because I'm sure I'd be happy with what I had. But there's something about diving in for the first time and buying old technology just just feels wrong. Peter says, "Devil's Advocate here. Why buy a 3D printer if you don't play many agnostic games just to print some scenery?" 
No, it's not. It's not for scenery, uh, for scenery, mate. It's not even for necessary for printing minis out, really. It's it, and it certainly wouldn't be for miniature agnostic games. It would be printing. It would be just for printing nice stuff that I want to paint. It might be for printing out like busts and stuff like that. It might be. You know, I, I see loads of people with really cool kind of like Batman busts that they've printed out or like Iron Man helmets that I could print and paint and put on a shelf in my little boy's room and stuff, just for something completely different. Something that's like that isn't necessarily. It's it it's close enough to what I love doing in my hobby, but but not necessarily linked to what I'm doing like in my job, if you like. So it's, uh, something different, really. Um, George says there's a great African game where you take turns to pick up beads in one of a circuit of twelve balls. I've seen this, mate. I can't remember what it's called. When I went to Disney World in Florida, we stayed at the Animal Kingdom uh, hotel and they were playing it there, and I forget what it was called now. Um, Christian says I definitely get a 4k printer over the Mars although I love my Mars for what it is and can produce also if you can get one with a bigger build area that would be better that's kind of where I'm at mate really like, like I say if I if I had the Mars I'd probably be happy with it uh, and I'm sure I would be happy with the print quality but it just feels weird buying all the tech Jared says the really nasty horse racing game is my all time favourite board game it's great to play with the family good fun and you get hilarious results most of the time I've been playing like my little boy starting to get into board games and it was his birthday back back end of September and he got a few board games for his birthday and I've really enjoyed playing them with him like one of them is just it's like a Disney game and I forget what it's called now but it's essentially you're just you basically move around the board and get to your home position if you like but you can you can do stuff to your opponent to, to basically slow them down you can make them go back to the start um, and we, I've quite enjoyed playing that with him he's got another one called maths what's it called maths maze it might be called something like that and essentially you roll you roll dice um and you have to either add the numbers together and that's how far you move or you take like you i think you roll two numbers and like either a, a plus or a minus dice as well and you have to like so obviously like it's about learning maths for kids and stuff but he he loves like playing that as well so i've they're obviously not like mentally taxing for me but it's nice to find something that he is four year old we can like play something together so actually that, to be honest I, I, I've played more more of that with him than I have with anything else I'll be honest um, um, where were we up to there just skipped ahead there I ain't seen every game is mini agnostic if your opponent's cool with it 100% me I agree with that um Tim says, played Ticket to Ride last night with the missus and one of the kids. It was great fun. It's a firm favourite here. I've never actually played Ticket to Ride the full game. I've only ever played the Ticket to Ride New York, the Ticket to Ride London, like the smaller ones. And I, and I love the game, but it, it play, they, they play super fast to the point where it's like 15 minutes and then you can kind of start and go again. I really like those games. Um, um, where are we up to here? Christian sharing the links again. Thank you very much, mate. Marcus is saying just finished giving his ghouls the shade. Now to wait 20 minutes in the dry. Do you ever use a hairdryer, mate, to speed them up? I tend to, um, like, not too hot and not too close. But sometimes I do kind of like to um, speed them up a little bit. Uh, Marcus says you can finish Hero Quest for the giveaway. Yeah, I do need to get to that, mate, to be fair. Marcus says, why don't you try painting one of the large Gundam models and give it a bit of battle damage? I'm not really into mechs, mate. They don't really do anything for me. It's I, like I I need to do something that I was interested in, and um, to be honest, um, Marco, it's probably one of the reasons why I've not got that finished. I'm just I'm just not really interested in it. I know I need to do it, but it's just that like they, they don't excite me. It's one of the reasons why I don't mind giving it away because it, it just doesn't doesn't excite me really. Um, the board seventy nine says she's under the patio. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. Um. Fiji saying just posted Mickey Mouse in the in the Discord. I'll have to check that out, mate. Thank you. Steve says Goblins in the Marauder team for Dreadball as well, as it's Rob's favourite team. I didn't realise they were in the Marauder team, mate. I forgot about Oh, of course they are. Of course they are. I forgot about that. Uh, Mark says, Cheers, yeah, I missed those teams. I'm not a fan of dwarves. I know <laughs> hate me now, but the Forge Fathers do look good. Uh, might get those. I quite like the um what's the convict team? There's a convict team, I think, which is like dwarfs. And I really like those as well. See if I can uh, find the name of them. Um, 
It's not the one that's in the extreme set. Um, I wonder if they're not convicts. I wonder if they're just the, the dwarfs in the orange. That might be all they are, actually. Of course, I can't find them now that I'm uh, looking for them on here. Brilliant radio major there. Just chatting, uh, chatting to myself while I'm looking for this picture. There they are. They, co uh, they oh no, that is the convict team. That's not the one I was thinking of. There they are. It's the uh, it's the Brocker team actually. I quite like the Brocker team. I'd be tempted to pick them up. I think. I keep uh, I keep looking at them. Um, Dice Hans says good evening. Anyone have advice for for a good doctor? I'm painting just about every day and feel I'm getting addicted to painting my miniatures. My latest project is Sky Tier. <laughs> Don't worry about getting addicted to that, mate. It's quite nice to have something to take your mind off stuff at the minute. Joachim says playing Azul or Ticket to Ride with his wife. I've never played Azul before, mate. Um, she's been against board games, but now she wants to play every evening. She definitely counts as a competitive, orientated player. My my wife definitely kind of likes to play board games. Obviously, not into miniatures games at all. It, it was kind of it was really nice if I had to play Dread Ball with eh, not Dread Ball for you, with me. Um, uh, Amada with me because miniatures games in general are not her kind of thing at all she'd much rather play something like um like pandemic or one of the exit games like those kind of like escape room games or something like that so i kind of have to pick and choose the stuff that we play together and that's why miniatures games are just not really seeing the light of day in our house at the minute it's one of the reasons i can't do like that she, like she, she always says well I'll, I'll play it with you like so you can do a review and stuff but it's never the same I, i'm never going to get a, a like I'm never gonna be able to get a balanced opinion if you like if if I if I know like if I know she's not really in which she doesn't really want to be playing it I don't want to put her through that. Um, the board says Bill and Ted minis for in time look awesome. Yeah, they look okay, mate, don't they? I don't know what the game's like to be fair, but the minis didn't look too bad. Um, Barry saying the Bill and Ted minis. Yeah, so um, War Cradle Studios have got a Bill and Ted Rift in Time board game coming out. Um. And most of the models are cardboard standees, but the main characters and stuff are like plastic one-piece minis. And then there's an, a, a Rufus expansion, which basically has the plastic minis in for the cardboard standees. I don't know what the board game's like, but the, but the minis look quite fun. Very cartoony looking versions of kind of Bill and Ted. Um, Peter Cini plays a lot of solo games. Um, Tony says, color shifts are a bit scary. You need to wick your brush off on some paper towel. So you apply in multiple thin layers. Took three coats. I wonder if it's like, like does does it look patchy when you're painting it because of like the kind of the colour shift? Is, is it easy to tell whether you've got like a nice sort of smooth coverage on them? Mark says because violence makes the universe go round. Literally, chemical reactions can be crazy. Yeah, there is an element of that, mate, isn't it? Like, like it's you know, people have people have battled against it. Even even competition, like even sport, is is kind of triggering those same responses. Tim says she can't beat me at that unless her character goes mad. Um, Tizzy Brindrin says, yeah, that's why I fell in love with co-op board games because there's such a change of pace from the competitive nature. Yeah, we do tend to play quite a bit of competitive, eh, cooperative stuff, to be fair. Fiji says he's got the Sonic Mini, got it six months ago, love it. We'll probably wait until the next gen after 4K to upgrade. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, excuse me, that's kind of what I mean. <laughs> kind of what I mean, actually. If I had one, I'd probably be happy with it, but it's just the fact that there's, there's newer stuff out now. So I'm going to, Spend the money. Should probably just save up then. Uh, Krabby said, "Is the Saturn the new Mars? Then it is actually made. There's a Mars, there's a Mars Pro, and then there's an Elagoo Saturn as well, which I think is the new one. But I think they're quite in sort of short supply at the minute. I think." Um, Tony said, "I like RPGs because it wasn't competitive." Uh, oh, I must have jumped ahead. Oh God. God, it did. I knew Tony had said something, but then I jumped to another one. He said, "He says, ah, now I get it. You guys like conflict, win and loser games. I like games that are solo, IQ tests, like mad scientist. I'm starting to kind of get more into like puzzle type stuff and testing testing my brain a little bit. And I wonder if it's because I don't feel like I'm kind of testing myself during the day. I wonder if that's what it is now. Um, Mark is saying Funkiverse is a great miniature skirmish game. I've heard really good things about the Funkiverse games." Scott Long was in as well, saying, what have I missed? Just the main part of the topic, mate. <laughs> um, George is saying, Camel Up, hoot of a game, being on a camel race. I've heard of Camel Up, I've never played it. Uh, uh, Marcus is saying, don't forget to drop a like. That would be very nice, folks. Thank you very much. 
84 viewers, 43 likes. Come on, half of you don't like what I'm doing. <laughs> Here's me, ill, <laughs> dragging myself out. I was actually in bed before the stream, just trying to kind of relax a bit. Dragging myself out of bed when I'm not feeling great, and you can't even give me a little, a little thumbs. I'm taking the mic. <laughs> um, Mancala, that is what it's called. Thank you very much. That is that African game. Scott says he's just got the Mars Pro. I think the Mars Pro is kind of like bigger build play, isn't it? And like, uh, has it got like an extra um, Z axis bar or something like that? Uh, Kirsten saying you can send your Gundams to me. I'll take them off your hands. Out of the goodness of my heart, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any to send you, Kirsten. Or I would. Uh, I would just, I would just never buy any because they're not really my kind of thing. Uh, Mark says just finished roughly eighty figures for Night of the Living Dead. Ah, the new um, Simon game, isn't it? Uh, monochrome scheme. Eyes have gone a bit weird now. I can imagine, mate. Uh, thank you, Christian, sharing the link there for the Goblin Gaming link. Thank you very much. Goblin got some really good deals on at the moment. Please do check them out. CXG says, speaking of hero quests, has anyone else seen the Kickstarter for the new version? Yeah, I saw it. I think it's one of those things where I think it's expensive for what it is. I think it's uh, it's a game that is steeped in rose-tinted glasses and everybody remembers how cool it was, but actually, in, in reality... The game isn't particularly like it, the, there's much better dungeon crawler games out there with much better rules. The fact that the new games st you still roll a dice to see how far you move. I mean that's the kind of stuff I'm playing with my four year old at the minute. It's um, I just I just I, I think the game's dated. It it doesn't really need an update. It's just the fact that there's a lot of nostalgia surrounds it personally. Um. um BG says, what's the name of that maths game? I've been playing the Paw Patrol game with my little guy. He's almost five, and of course he loves snakes and ladders. I think it's called... I, th I think it's called, like, Maths Maze or something like that, or... Or maybe called Some Swamp. Let me find out for you, mate, and I'll, I'll drop you a message in Discord. Because uh, he got it for his birthday, and he absolutely loves it. I think it's it's got, like, some kind of, like, alliteration name like that. Um... Scott said he was playing Carcassonne with his son last night before he went to bed. Carcassonne's a fun game as well, actually. I quite like that. I've mentioned this before on live streams and stuff. I'd never have bought that game in a million years, judged by looking at the cover. So I, I got it bought for me as a gift, uh, and I'm glad I did, because I would never have picked it up. But it, was, it's, it is really good. Uh, Mark says his wife's the same. She kicks my ass at the all, but she thinks about each move for five minutes. <laughs> oh, that's it. Steve saying to me, him and his missus like playing Dreadball and Disney Villainous. I've just saw me... There is um, there's a Marvel Vilness as well, actually. Oh, is it a Star Wars Vilness? I forget which one it is now. It's one of the two. It might be Marvel Vilness, actually. And I've been tempted to uh, to pick up that version to play. Um, what else did I see as well? There is... There's a game I quite fancy, actually. So if anybody's familiar with the Thanos Rising game, um, where essentially you play as the Avengers. It's, it's almost like a card game with like a massive big Thanos in the middle of the board. You play as the Avengers battling against Thanos. There's a Batman version is coming out, which is called... Um, it's called the Bat, the Bat Who Laughed Rising. Or the Bat the Batman Who Laughs, I think it is. And it's based upon the um, the multiverse for Batman, where there's basically there, there is a Joker who is Batman in this kind of multiverse thing. Um, for those of you not in the comic books, that probably doesn't make any sense. But essentially, in the multiverse, there are multiple different universes, different timelines, with kind of similar realities, but like twisted. So there's like evil Superman. There's different versions of Batman, and in one of the universes, there is a Batman who is Joker, and it's um, quite a famous kind of storyline within the comic books. But but they've brought this board game out, which is based based on that, and, and there's a big. Um, the Batman who laughs miniature, like in the middle of the board, and I was tempted to pick that up purely just like be cool to play, but then it'd be nice to have it as an ornament as well. Um, Peter says I always get to play memory with a little one or Kakaruku. I don't even pronounce that one. Uh, Tony says he likes RPGs because it wasn't competitive. I won't even do bowling with the family because of the extreme nastiness. My my older lads, we had a horrible game of Risk once that I'll never forget. <laughs> Uh, Joachim says, paint the wolf war band for Warcry. Can't decide if you go for Clan Pestilence or Clan Scurvy. Green or yellow? Ooh. I'd probably go green, mate. Personally. But just because painting yellow is a pain in the backside. Uh, Christian says, anyone seen the new Hocus Pocus game by Ravensburger? Looks quite good. I haven't, mate, actually. 
I haven't seen that. Ariel Sanchez, good evening. If I can see where that was before I jumped away. It says, hi guys, wanted to paint something different. I remembered about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles board game I play with my kids. Thugs are almost done and foot ninjas are next. That's quite nice to do something like that, isn't it? Uh, Jared says, colour shift works really well through an airbrush. Ah, I never, I never considered that. Um, Mark, Hoff, uh, Mark Hornuff says he got the He-Man Mini today from Archon. It looks really nice. I think um, Mark all got that as well, I believe. Um, Scott's in 44 likes now. Four, that took 61 now, to be fair. Um, oh, that was a little while ago you said that, though. VJ saying, base coach drying on Mickey, trying to build his kinks. Uh, Eon Intense says, I like it, mate. Um, thank you very much. Peter says, been looking at airbrushes, but don't know to get a cheap starter at around 40 quid to go slightly upmarket and a better compressor at about 85. My tip, mate, would be if you're going to spend 85 quid, what you're probably going to buy is you're going to buy um, a slightly better compressor, but it, it won't have a tank for 85 quid because I think you're probably going to spend over 100 quid or you're going to be spending around 90 to well, maybe a bit more. About 100 quid, I think, will be 110 quid for a compressor with a tank and an airbrush. So that's the difference, mate. If you if you just want to kind of dip your toe in and give it a try, I recommend those kind of 30, 40 quid ones that, that I've done my review on. Honestly, that's 100% honest. I'm using I'm still using it now to, to kind of to see how long it lasts. It's working absolutely fine. I've had no blockages with it. The next step from that, if you're going to spend a bit more, if you want to get something better, you're probably looking to buy a compressor with a tank and you're probably looking to upgrade the brush as well at some point. And this is what I got into. By the time I bought the compressor with a tank with the, the brush that it came with and then I bought a better airbrush, I'd spent nine times what I'd spent on that 30 quid airbrush. And I'm not sure it was nine times better is my point. Um, I could it, it, Even if that wears out after six months, I could buy that nine times. I could get five years worth out of that before I'd even broke even with what I'd spent on the other one. It depends on what you're going to use it for, mate. But th those cheaper ones, like if you buy from Amazon, they've got really good returns policy. If anything goes wrong with it, they'll just take it straight back and refund you. Um, Jared saying, yeah, I, I have the AS186 compressor, mate, and I say it's worth it. That's the one I've got as well, mate. The compressor is great. I've got nothing. No, I can't say anything bad about the compressor. It's it's really good, and it's it's lasted well. I've had no issues with it. It's just a lot more expensive, that's all. So it depends on what you're going to use it for, mate. Scott's saying, the build plate's the same size, but upgraded from the Mars, but prints slightly faster. Oh, I think, has it got a monochrome screen, mate? Is that why? Is that is that what I think it might be? Stocky says, we're deliberately not liking it until we get the, oh, come on, guys, so many viewers, so many comments. <laughs> That's what it was. It's definitely bumped up a little bit. There's still a few people who haven't liked it. Um, Mark is saying, for drying models quickly, I put them in one of my aquariums with nothing in it and turn the heating lamp on. I, I used to put them underneath my painting lamp just to kind of like where there was a little bit of heat. But if, if I'm kind of, if I'm just painting individual minis, I tend to just use a bit of a hairdryer, as you'll have seen in that uh, in that airbrush video I did. Jared says, airbrushes are funny. It's worth learning a paint mix on a cheap one, but they're frustrating to use. I've seen them bought an Iowata on eBay for 135. It's worth it. Christian saying, yeah, depends upon what you want. Um, cheaper sets are fine for priming and base coats. I have a compressor with a tank and a cheap 20 quid airbrush plus a more expensive budget. Yeah, that's kind of pretty similar to what I've got, mate. I've got the um, the Harder and Steinbach Evolution, which I think was like 100 and odd quid for the brush on its own. Scott's in, he has a few more expansions for Carcassonne, which makes the game more competitive. Um... Uh, Scott saying, oh, Batman, take my money. Yeah, I'm a big Batman fan as well. Thanos Rising one. Yeah, have, have a look at the Batman one, mate. It's really cool. So, VG says, can anyone explain Carcassonne to me? Why is it such a good game? The box looks boring. <laughs> that was exactly where I was, mate. Um, it is essentially a, like a worker placement type thing. So you basically pull tiles out. You have to play the tile, and there's only certain places where they go. So you can join up roads, you can join up rivers, you can join up cities and stuff, like building a wall around the outside of a city. And then you place your your workers either inside the city as a knight, you place them on the road as a, what they call, like a highwayman or something. You can place them on churches as a monk. 
And then basically, you, at, at the end of it, when all the tiles have come out, you count up the points, you get certain points for controlling areas. And it's it's a bit like a puzzle, basically, mate. You can kind of block off your opponent and stuff. It, it's a really, really good game. It just, it, the box art makes it look like the most dull thing in the world. This is one of those games with a bar Barry powered little cockroach running around. There's a dragon thing. I've never heard of them, mate. Uh, Mark saying there's a few themed on the rising mechanics. Yeah, I've, I've seen quite a few of them as well, mate. Um, Brad says he was just looking at his unopened Vilnius on Saturday when we were looking at a game to play. We had, we had done throw, throw burrito and then ticket the ride. Yeah, the Vilnius is great, mate. You'll enjoy Vilnius. Um, Bob saying if I talk to my wife in the minis game, she wins even though she says she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Uh, William Jones says, Andy, if you're feeling depleted, it's for a reason. For my part, I'm perfectly happy for you to take a break if you need one. The bowel that is always bent will break. Why not skate till Monday? I enjoy it, mate, to be honest. The thing is, if I took a break, what am I going to do with my time? It's not like I can go anywhere. Like that, It's it's not that I don't enjoy what I'm doing. I, I'm not like feeling burnt out. It's more a case of just, um, like content-wise, it's quite hard. There's not a lot of new stuff out to talk about, especially when I don't really focus on 40k or like the, the main GW stuff. Um, and the fact that I'm not able to play games to kind of either review stuff, I'm not allowed, to, I can't really play games to do kind of playthroughs. It's that kind of stuff, really. So it's not that I'm kind of like, I'm not like burnt out or anything. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm kind of reaching some limits of, of what I can do with the options available to me at the minute. And that's it's a bit of a worry based upon the fact that, that, that that's what I do for a job kind of thing. I know I know it's going to get better at some point, but I just have to kind of weigh these things up. So um Christian sharing the link there as well for Amazon. Don't forget folks yet Black Friday on the way. Um Jared saying I managed to oh La Cucaracha. That's what I was. I was. I was thinking it was La Cucaracha, but and I couldn't pronounce what was written down. Um, uh, where was that one up to? Chris, uh, Kirsten said, "Anyone know of a good place to get some three D printed in the UK?" There are a few people in here. Will um, I, I assume that's what they're doing now? Will off, offer their services. Jared says, "Just posted a picture of burning gold through an airbrush in the underdog group, so you can see it." Um, thanks Jared uh, Scott saying do you have the files um, blah 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 everyone's having a bit of a chat Marcus says looking at the Skaven box for Warcry I feel like the box is barely worth buying since if you want to buy a Storm Fiend you need to buy them separately and you would need to co cover the clan rats I don't really know much about mate, about the um, Skaven made for Warcry um, the Skaven minis are nice but I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about the kind of uh, the the competitive side of things, I would just buy the box and play what was in there, if I'm honest. Mark was his home favourite at the moment is Quacks of Quillenburg. Good free six. Uh, I didn't realize that you could be able to play that one with younger ones, mate. I like the idea, idea of Quacks of Quillenburg, actually. Um, I think there's an expansion for that now as well, isn't there? Jared says he managed to pick up a AS86 with cheaper airbrush to Amazon for 85 quid. I think the problem is, mate, is I don't think there is cheap now. And the cheap AS86s don't come with a tank. That's the problem, mate, I think. Um, um, what's he up to? Scott says, I used to love Munchkin. I'm not a fan of Munchkin, actually, mate. Um, Jared saying, get the affiliate link out. I think it, it's, it's in the chat, mate. I think Christian's been sharing it all night. I insist uh, city stealing is the best part of Cask Carcass one, especially when another player that ignores the city's wins via forms. Yeah, the only difficult one is farmers, I think. It's, it, it's the one you have to kind of almost stop at the end and, and work it out a little bit. The rest, sometimes playing without farmers to start with is a good way to kind of just get your head around the game. Uh, George is saying it's got some expansion ends and cathedrals and things. There's a Star Wars Carcassonne as well, I think, actually. Um, <laughs> Peter says, if you're skinned for ideas, maybe it's time for that studio tour. There are things I can do, mate. The problem is... Because of the way YouTube works, if I do something just for the sake of doing it and it doesn't get many views, it basically kills the momentum of any of my other videos because the way YouTube's system works is it thinks, oh, no, nobody's really interested in what he's doing anymore now. We're going to stop sharing the old stuff. So you've got to be really careful about what you produce. Like, like if I just wanted to go, I'm just going to do a quick video just to show you what I've been painting this week. 
and I put that up on the, on the channel um, and it does like 200 views, it, it kills any momentum that you've been building from all the videos. You'd be surprised how, how much it affects it. So I've got to be kind of careful to mix things in. It's okay to do those things on the back or, or, or like alongside like a, a more popular video. But if I don't do anything for a little while and then do that one, it really adversely affects it. It's weird the way it works. I've, I've been doing this long enough now that I, I, I've, I've tested that out to see what happens and it definitely does screw it up. Um... Are you up to um greg cherry hello greg says i'll run a dnd &D game for you on roll 20 endless content the problem is mate it's it's um it again it, it it screws up the channel because my audience don't come to see um sort of rpg stuff unfortunately so it it does kind of it, it just messes up that uh the people that subscribe to the channel expect to see miniatures content in general, I mean, I know you lot might be a bit different. The kind of the, the Monday night hard hard crew kind of thing that there, uh, the hardened kind of uh, main crew, but it's it just it, you'd be surprised how it, it screws everything up basically. Um, and you almost have to make two or three really good videos to to kind of get some momentum and get get it going again. Um, Vigi seeing the Skaven Warcry boxes trash. The Rat Ogres are garbage. Old sculpt. I, I, I'm surprised they put the old ones in there. I mean, I, I hadn't paid too much attention to it if I'm honest. Um, Tony says 3D printing there are a few in here be happy to print for you yes Scott says I need how do you do a how to play god tier video or a bat rep or even do a video with your favourite champions I've done a how to play god tier video mate the, the review I did shows you how to play uh, I can't do a bat rep because I can't play with anybody Um, because my, my like Nobody wants to watch a bat rep of just one champion versus one champion. And my missus doesn't want to play at like a kind of like at three champion levels. Um Mortis says, why not put a video out about the best board game to play with a four-year-old? Then I've got to be careful with um aiming content at children, mate, which is a whole different ball game again, unfortunately. I'm not trying to put um barriers in the way, but I, I, I have kind of I've i I've given all of this stuff lots and lots of thought, to be honest. Like I'm not asking kind of like for for I'm not I'm not trying to kind of mine for ideas or anything like that. I'm I'm more suggesting the fact that like kind of it's the, the, life is how life is at the minute and it just it's just making things a bit more difficult than it would be ordinary really. Uh, James is off to bed. Good night, mate. Krabby says if the 40k content doesn't increase, I'm writing a strongly worded letter. I'll send you the address, mate. <laughs> um. To be honest, mate, one of, one of the reasons I'm kind of a bit down on the 40k stuff is because I, I know I'm not going to be able to get to play any games anytime soon. That's what's annoying the life out of me, if I'm honest. I almost don't want to put the effort into painting stuff up at the minute when there's, there's I don't feel like there's a purpose inside for it, if you like. Um, Scott's saying, best, vi best video to play with younger kids will be good. Yeah, it's honestly, mate, I, I, I don't want to get into doing... Um, games like for children and stuff like that. Again, it's not it's not what my audience kind of come looking for. Um, I, like, for example, I did a video a while ago about, about Ticket to Ride, and I think even now that video has got about 200 views. Versus, like, last week, I clipped out a little bit of the video that we did last Monday about the Fantasy Flight stuff and put it up as a as a, a clip, and it's done 2,000 views. Like, it's 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 just, it's, it's random. Like... There's there's no point me just doing a video for doing a video. See, if like tonight's video, like I'll I'll have sat here for two hours, kind of thing. We'll we'll have more views than if I put like two days work into doing a video about games for kids. If you don't if you don't believe me, check out Age of Sig um Agents of Sigmar. They've done a few videos which are about kind of um like games for parents, kind of thing, like forty k parents point of view and stuff, and they just. Unfortunately, even though they're well done, they just don't get the views. Um, um, Regis and new rat ogres sculpt shared us through with high elves. I think I've already got them rat ogres, mate. I think I've already got them. I've, I I bought that old um, high elves and the island of blood set years ago. Um, Kirsten saying more Armada content. I am painting up my uh, my orc ships at the minute. To be fair, 
Uh, Peter says, I feel like how to get the missus playing miniature board games video. I would never do a video like that. I'm, I'm not... I'm actually, I'm not a fan of, of, the, of those questions about how do I get my wife to play games or how do I get my girlfriend to play games? Like, if you've asked them and they don't want to play, like, I'm not going to be able to tell you how to, how to do it. Like, you shouldn't have to kind of convince people to do stuff. They either want to or they don't. Like, you don't see videos about how do I get my husband, like, sewing clothes or something like that, like, like making dresses. Like, it's, it, so you either want to play or you don't want to play. I, I don't like the idea of having to convince somebody. Um, Starty says, "Did Mantic mention solo rules for Dead Zone?" Yeah, I think I think there is. Me, you, you need a load of kind of like zombies and stuff for it, and um, to to play them through. The problem is with with solo games, when you're filming them yourself as well, it's really difficult to constant, if, especially if you don't know the game very well, because you've got to really know the rules well. You've got to control everything. You've got to keep an eye on cameras and everything else. It's it, it's actually quite difficult to play a game solo and control all of the, the video and stuff like that. It's much easier for me to kind of to do like a review of something or to play a two-player game where I can rely upon the other person to kind of to help me out with rules and keep an eye on stuff or, or at least be like be talking and taking their turn while I'm checking to make sure everything's still working. You'd be surprised how kind of uh, like how much there is to kind of to watch actually. Ian says, okay, maybe it's crazy, maybe I'm crazy, but I saw another channel do an AI versus AI game from two well-painted armies using Grimdark Future. Mm. No. <laughs> not, for, not for me anyway, mate. Tim says, maybe was I too harsh on Highlander video? Win back all those Highlander fans. To be honest, mate, I wasn't harsh enough, if I'm honest. Um, I see it's on sale at the moment. It's 15 quid at, on, at Warlord Games. Don't buy it. Don't Save yourself 15 quid. Um, Peter says just think about how many different armies you can field later if you paint 40k now yeah but I won't though mate I, w I won't because I I want to be able to play it I want to try it I want, I, like I, I, I'm not even intending on buying any of the books until at least I can get some games in so I'm, I don't want to be building building armies for something that like is, is six months away um Scott says, right, he's off the bed. He's got a fork truck course tomorrow. Take care, mate. Kirsten says, nobody should ever mention that in the game. <laughs> exactly. Uh, George says, you'd have to say in dog shit. I don't know what that means, mate. Um, Marcus says, video idea is Funkiverse, the best skirmish war game ever. <laughs> stop saying it. Oh, I'd have to stop saying it. I'd, I'd, I don't know where I don't know what that is. Um, I'd have to I'd have to buy it first though, mate. I'd have to buy it to to, to say that. Uh, Spunky Taz, I'm assuming there can only be one Highlander game. Um, I think one was enough, mate. If I'm honest, it was probably one too many. Peter says five best designer bags to bribe your second other. You should never have to bribe anybody. People should either play or they don't play. You don't have to convince anybody. Um, Kenneth Paulson said, "I'd love to see a bat rep of Pirates of the Red Sea." Nah, it's not my kind of game, mate. Uh, Vijay says, okay, all skink bits off the sprue, not feeling the build zone. I'm going to put them away. Uh, George saying, new battle systems, Kickstarter, Core Space, Firstborn will have solo rules. It will, mate. It will. Same as old um, Core Space has solo rules. Uh, Greg Cherry says, definitely solo filming, playing is a skill. Ash does pretty well. Battle Hammer has done some great solo, uh, low production vids of last days. Yeah, I, I just... I don't want to make content for the sake of making content. I I, I personally don't enjoy watching um, solo get like solo gameplay. Um, for me, a, a big part of watching anybody playing a game is the interaction between the players and seeing people kind of the, like hearing the chat and and feeling like you're part of the kind of the game if you like and part of the conversation. I just I find one person um, playing a game solo just isn't that entertaining personally if I'm honest uh, and that's why I, w I don't that's why I don't make them myself I'm not going to make stuff that I wouldn't want to watch myself um, Ben Davies says sorry late in just listening to your start couldn't agree more I bought Indomitus but I can't get inspired by it so I've bought a Jakar roll because why wouldn't I want an orangutan in my army exactly mate Barry says Battletech definitely one of the new favourite games low entry price but 35 year legacy great rules everything makes sense to an old school war gamer 
Yeah, but I'll tell you, I'm just I'm just not into that kind of like that mech warrior type uh, aesthetic, if I'm honest. Uh, <laughs> Spanky Taz says, from that, I guess it's as good as Sean Connery's Ramirez accent. It's almost as good as his um, his Russian accent in Hunt for Red October. Uh, Peter says, I've turned back to my Gene Stiller cultist. Should I enable me to play a 40k on some future date? Yes, mate. VJ says, the name of the game who shall not be named. Tony says, with you on that one, my oldest can't, can't see. My youngest is only interested in Xbox and YouTube. My other half won't do geek. I'm okay to be a pure hobbyist. Yes, exactly. George says, oh, if you were to stream about kids' games, sorry, I misunderstood what you meant. Yes, I wouldn't be. Well, I probably wouldn't feel like dog shit by that point. <laughs> Cabby says, we need to do another chat video, mate. I'll bring my Marines or maybe start the Massive Marines. Massive Marine. Um, yeah, we should do, mate. Actually, we should do. The only problem I have is uh, where every time I've tried to do a um a live stream video using Skype and stuff like for the streams, it's basically ground my PC to a halt. So I'm gonna have to like try and try try Zoom or try something else, because uh, I tried to do it a couple of times, um with and I've done it in the past. I've I've done like interviews like me and you did a live stream and it seemed to work fine, but I think Skype's had an update since then and, and it basically just um. It just takes over the PC. It uses so much of the um, the processor, um, and I haven't got a I haven't got a bad processor either. To be fair, um, George is saying I'm not played solo, but think I'm going to have to soon. Uh, to be honest, with me, I'm kind of starting to think the same as well. Just the purely, but I I don't. I'd be perfectly. Honest, I don't enjoy it as much. Like like I say, part of playing games for me is the social aspect. I I I don't get the same enjoyment playing solo. I'll be perfectly honest. Christian says, hit me up to test Zoom in the week. I might actually do that, mate. I might do that. George is saying, well done for the stream when you're feeling crap. He's off to bed now. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be wrapping it up soon, I think. I think I just need a good night's sleep, I think. But yeah. I managed to go on longer than I expected. Um Yogam saying, Good night, folks. Get well soon, honey. I'm sure I'll be fine a day or two. I tend not to get ill very often. Pretty, I tend to kind of shook things up. It's probably just something I've eaten that's not agreed with me. So um, we'll, we'll we'll do another five or ten minutes when I'm finishing my drink off anyway. But I did manage to catch up with a chat anyway. <laughs> Stu says the phantom down voter has struck. Awesome. That's what I like to see. It wouldn't be the same if I didn't get that air. Yeah. If I didn't get that. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I, I like to see my uh, my down voter, whoever that is. There's always one. Can't I can't see now because it's not on my phone. Let me have a check. Uh, go back to my channel. Let's have a look and see if it's there. I, I always like to see it. Um, I need to turn the sound down first so you don't get. It. Oh, two. I got I got two down votes this week. That's all right. <laughs> Maybe they got two accounts now. I'm all right with that one. Um. Probably saying, I'm pretty sure you can only get forty minutes on Zoom. Would Google Hangouts not work? I think I don't. I think you get more than that, mate. If it's um, if you if it's the paid for version, um, yeah. Google. I don't even think Google has Google not got rid of Hangouts now. I think it's called something else. Marcus says, if you don't like playing solo, play Chewbacca. <laughs> Jeffrey says, thanks for the content, and it's always appreciated. Glad I'm a Patreon support, and it's well worth it. Thank you, mate. Never mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Greg says, spoke with local game store who's suffering due to its closures. These are definitely adapt or die times. The 100% they are, mate. They definitely, definitely are. Jared says, he's completely bought painting his ultramarines, so he started Care Space Marines. Uh, what's wrong with me? Lord Maiden says, one just disappeared. Ooh. <laughs> they must have been in the chat. <laughs> um, says, Barry says, maybe they've got two accounts now. And Rob says, yeah, uh, wait to hang in there, Andy. It's been a bit since I caught the live stream stuff, so thanks. You're welcome, mate. It's fine. I think I just need a bit of a a bit of a refresher. A bit of a I might I might actually just take a day off tomorrow. I mean there's nothing there's nothing from tonight's stream that I'm gonna clip out and, and, and put up as like a clips video for tomorrow, I don't think. I might potentially clip out the bit that when I was talking about the kind of like the main topic and stuff, but I don't know if it's enough to really to drive anything. So I might just take a day off tomorrow and come back. Come back strong on Wednesday on my birthday. Um Tony's saying he's posted his initial base coat with colour shift stuff. I, I can't wait to see it, mate. Busy's saying solo game on live stream can chat and get involved with the decisions. I think, to be honest, mate, I, I might be better off with the, the, We could do something like that. I, I've done that with um, 
what was it called again? With here's Negan. I've done that before. And actually, they kind of they kind of work better with a live stream because um, there's no excuse me. There's no rush for me to kind of there's no rush for me to do it. I, I can kind of chat to you while I'm thinking things over. And, we, and like, so there's no nothing wrong with it being a two hour stream. Where if you have like a two hour gameplay video, that's quite a lot for people to sit through. But it's a bit different when it's a live stream. So yeah, we might we might do a solo game live one night. Um, Lord Min says, thank you, Andy. You're a good end on Monday. Thank you very much. Always good to see the Northern Monkey. Thank you. Brad says, his wife uses Google Hangouts for group crafting and stuff with friends. I thought I thought um, Google had got rid of Google Hangouts. And, and, unless, they, unless they renamed it Google Hangouts, it used to be called something else. Um, or they brought it back, one of the two. Um, but yeah, I think Zoom is probably the way to go. It seems to be the kind of the, the mainstay now that most people... It seems to be what... Um, like BBC News and everybody uses anyway, so it must mustn't be too much of a problem. Peter says one of the Phantom Down voters was a fan. <laughs> I'm all right with that. I don't mind that one. Peter says I got here's Negan painted and ready to go, and also Star Saga. Need more lockdown. I was tempted to actually pick up, um, and I know it's kind of the, they're not really supported anymore now, but I was tempted to pick up Imperial Assault. The, uh, the Star Wars game because you can play that solo if you use the app and actually I thought using the app to kind of to drive the game might actually kind of be a bit better than just trying sitting and flicking through a rule book sitting on my own sometime I need to have a think about that one though anyway folks I think I'll wrap it up there now because I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and I'm going to go to bed so thank you everybody I apologise if I've not been kind of normal kind of chirpy happy stuff today i'm just uh yeah a bit under the weather so i'll um i will i'll, I'll probably be a bit quiet tomorrow i think i think i'm probably going to have a bit of a maybe a day off a bit of a go back to bed after, after i've dropped a little one at nursery and stuff and try and pull myself around uh but i will be back on wednesday for wednesday's hobby hangout it's, it's my birthday i'm going to sit and have a drink i'm going to chill i might paint i might not paint i might just kind of just do something different but I'll definitely be back on Wednesday anyway. So, take care folks, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge and support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.